Today we review the Arrow Garden Harvest. In black. So we're going to show you how the Arrow Garden Harvest works. We're going to show you a time-lapse growth video of the herb packet that goes with it and talk about some tips and tricks that'll make your hydroponic harvest even more successful. Are those experimental herbs? <laughs> they are not. They're just actual honest to goodness herbs. Does anybody herbs. know that reference? Do you know that reference? <laughs> I don't know that, that reference. I know you don't. It's okay. It's from a movie. I'm not saying. <laughs> okay, so to start off, the Arrow Garden Harvest is an all-in-one hydroponics kit. So if you're brand new to hydroponics, this is probably the simplest way to get your feet wet. Haha, -ha, see what I did there? Anyway, it includes <laughs> its own light, its own reservoir. The its jokes don't get better, folks. I'm sorry. Its own pump and a simple indicator panel to show you when to do what you need to do when you need to do it. So, hey, it thinks for you. Awesome. All right, so to start off, we're gonna go about the different elements of the hydroponics kit itself. So that way you can see all the different components before you get your own. All right, so this is the top of our reservoir. So this is going to be our growing surface, if you will. So you have these pods that fit into these different holes. So the Arrow Garden Harvest is a six pod unit. And then this part right here is where you're going to put in the water. And if we can do a quick downward look to see in that hole, you'll see there's a little indicator saying fill to here, and that will show you how far uh, to fill the water level. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the reservoir tub itself. As you can see, this whole section is where the water stays, and the pump, which I'm gonna show you in a second, brings that water and recirculates it and comes through the little valves in the top so that the roots get all the nutrients and water and then it goes back down into the tub to collect. So let's see what's inside, shall we? We're going to lift the lid off and you can see inside here, this is the pump. There is a little filter here. Ours has some stuff collected in it because this is not the first time we've used this unit. And it fits in this little slot here, like so, protecting the motor for the filtration system from any debris and roots getting in there. This is your fill water. It has an um, indicator. It has a, a device inside that tells the electronics of the unit uh, when more water is necessary. And this little tube here that's actually <laughs> that's actually removable for cleaning purposes is what brings the water once it's filtered through the system up to the tray. So this is the underside of the tray and you can see this protrusion here fits into that tube that I just showed you from the filter and it brings water into the tray which then pours out through these individual um, spouts for each pod again replenishing the nutrients to each plant. So this is the underside of the LED light. You can see it's actually a collection of multiple light sources. This is a full spectrum 20 watt LED light. So it has the full range needed to create the correct amount of photosynthesis in your plants. So a little more on that light, as you can see by this lever here, if I push that down, I can adjust the height of that light. I do that all the time. <laughs> so when you start off, you want your light in the lowest position. That way it's directing its light directly to those little sproutlings to get them going. But as they get closer and start growing towards your light, you want to adjust it upwards because you don't want your plants to actually touch the light or may cause some burnage on the leaves. Can I say something? Certainly. Which actually brings up an important point. If you think that, oh, well, look it, it's only that high, I can fit it in this little tiny space. That's not really true because as your plants grow, you may end up being fully extended out, yeah. which is about there. So you need to make sure that the whole thing can fit or you're gonna have to trim your plants really, really short sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So this space here, once the light is fully extended, gives you roughly 12 inches of growth height, which means from the very base to the very top, once the light is fully extended, you're gonna need roughly 18 inches of space 
touch less yeah. to keep this um, on your countertop. And in our instance, our countertop was perfectly fine mm -hmm. for it to be fully extended. I think we're almost fully extended, not yeah. quite, like just, yeah. just a half inch below. So as long as you're close to that, you should be fine. The rest of your dimensions are roughly 11 by 8 inches, so keep that in mind. You also want to give it some space for the cores that you're going to see are going to come out the back, and just so that your plants aren't too crowded, you want some airflow. So there's some things that we need to consider before we get started. First is that this cord fits... Can she do it Can I do looking? it backwards? I can! Right there. And what that is is the power so that your light, your motor, and everything is connected to your display panel, which is right here. The second thing is you need your power cord. Which Brian has already plugged in, so I can't show you that other end. <laughs> he was being, uh, uh, what's the term? Proactive. He's being proactive. <laughs> but it does have this little uh, AC adapter. So you, when you... Um, it's not that little, just so you know. Yeah, it's that big. It's a little boxy. Yeah. So keep that in mind, too, when you're trying to figure out where you're going to place this, because you're going to need that outlet space. And the prongs are in this direction, so it'll be sitting yep, this way. it takes up way. two slots, maybe three on a six-plug adapter. So keep that in mind, um, again, when you're getting ready to purchase this. But other than its orientation, once you have a place to plug it in, it's really simple. You just plug it in, and then right here, where it's indicated as power, is where the other end goes, and you're all set. But I'm not doing that quite yet, because the first thing I need to do is put water into my tub. Now, if you are a longtime viewer of our channel, then you know our in-house water is pre-filtrated, which means we remove the sediment and chlorine from our tap water. So that kind of water is perfectly okay for this. You don't have to go too crazy about your water quality because the nutrients that are created for this kit help kind of stabilize any funkiness that may be in your water. If your water is highly chlorinated, I would probably advise not using that because chlorine and plants don't really get along very well. A simple solution to that is if you know you're going to need to be refilling this soon, take a bucket, put some water in it, and just let it sit for a while because oh, yeah. chlorine is a gas and it will eventually escape the water. But you could also just get like a gallon of spring water and use that. Yeah. Uh, you don't want anything that's stripped entirely of all its nutrients. Even though we are feeding our plants, we're only going to be doing that when the indicator light tells us to. So just use normal water and you should be fine. Basically, if you wouldn't drink it, your plants probably won't want too much either. <laughs> Okay, so I took my tub over to the sink, filled it to the fill line, and I've replaced it. I replugged in my power cord, and I made sure there's a little notch in the lid uh, to allow the power cord to come through without being squished. So I made sure that it was positioned correctly. It's really not that big of a deal. So now I am set to start the power. So I'm going to, as was said before, put this into the little power outlet here in the back. It's basically the only jack on the back of this thing, so you don't have much choice. So here you can see the filtration system in action. I haven't placed the pods in yet, but you can see the water is being pumped up into the lid and flowing through that little reservoir to water the plant that doesn't exist there yet. <laughs> so when you first plug it in, your lamp is automatically going to come on, and that is okay, but for the purposes of filming, we have temporarily turned it off. It totally ruined the exposure. Because it's going to ruin your view of what we're doing. <laughs> so as you can see here on the left, the add plant food indicator light is flashing red. And this is because at the very beginning, it is time to add your first dose of liquid plant food. Once I have done that, I am going to push the button and I'm going to go ahead and do that for your visual cue. And you see the light changes to green, telling you you're set to go. It will flash red again when it's time to add a second dose of plant food. The button in the middle is blue, and it says add water. That too will flash when it's time to add water, as the indicator that I pointed out earlier 
will show that your water level has dropped significantly. The last light that looks like a sun is the light on and off switch. I'm going to hit it briefly just to show you what it looks like and then hit it again. It's just a slight tap to hit these buttons. You don't have to mash hard. It's a pretty sensitive uh, display panel, but we're going to talk further about the light on off button in a moment. All right, since I went ahead and pushed the added plant food button, let's go ahead and add our plant food, shall we? Otherwise you lied. <laughs> so your new bottle is going to have a foil seal. Just puncture that. With your powerful nails. <laughs> Violence is again the answer. <laughs> and then you're going to put the lid back on because you forgot to shake it, right? <laughs> I thought I was the natural one. <laughs> okay, so on the back of the bottle, it tells you how much to add to your arrow garden unit based on how many pods your arrow garden unit has. I'm gonna open the water reservoir area and I'm going to fill one gap full. Okay, and two caps full. It's that simple. My plants are now fed. My non-existent ghost plants are now fed. <laughs> Speaking of plants, let's put some plants in there, shall we? All right, so now we're ready to start adding our plants. We are using the herb kit, which comes with your original purchase, and you can buy it again, and they come like this. They also have a multitude of other kits, tomato kits, salad kits, pepper kits, you name it, they have it. So each pod has some information on it that's important for you to take recognition of. As you can see here, this one is Thai basil. It sprouts in five to 10 days and it is listed as tall. Now taking con consideration of the tall, the medium, and the short is important for where you're going to place those pods in your arrow garden kit. The tall ones should go more towards the back where the short ones go more towards the front. This makes it easier for you to harvest from your kit without having to mess with it too much. Hmm. So Thai basil is tall, so I'm gonna put it back here. Dill is tall, so I'm gonna put it back here. Genovese basil is tall as well. It's also awesome. As you can tell by that comment, it's also Brian's favorite. So that's why I am using one of the middle positions for it. So that way Brian can get to it really easily. We could fill this whole thing with that. And, and he'd he be happy. He'd be very happy. So mint is a medium and that is going to go next to the Genovese basil. It does make very nice tea. I will say that. The mint does. Yes. Time is short, but it's also one of Brian's favorites. You can never have enough time, and it is short. <laughs> and curly parsley is also short. Of all of them, my least favorite on here is actually the curly parsley. It's not my favorite kind of parsley. I like Italian flat leaf parsley. The curly parsley is just kind of like, it's good to like just cut a piece and make a plate look pretty, but <laughs> that's about it. So as you can tell, I, I placed these in till they went all the way to the bottom, but it's not particularly important for you to be very forceful with it. You just want so that they don't pop up yeah, and, and I'm, float. I'm popping the corks around, that's all. They, yeah. they float a little he, bit in there and it just bothers me. They need to be safe. <laughs> they will soak up the water mm. and then fall into place. It's no big deal. But what is a big deal is these little things. And I know they look kind of silly and I have this full stack so you can tell how many of these I've gotten so far. But these are going to help your pods retain a constant level of humidity, which is going to increase the viability of your seeds actually germinating. Now, as you can see, the little covers just kind of hang out there. They don't really fit perfectly, and that's okay. It's you just, like a little terrarium. Yeah, yeah, basically. Because in their own environment, that way yep. breezes and things like that don't affect them. They have their own, their own ecosystem. So some things that I didn't talk about that I probably should have, so I'm going to talk about them now. The temperature of your water should be 
cool to room temperature. You don't want to put hot water and you want, don't want to put cold water in here either from the beginning or when you're refilling because that could shock your plants and the whole purpose of caring for plants is to not shock them because that causes damage and inhibits their growth. It's even more critical for a system like this where basically the roots are just hanging out in water. Yeah. There's no dirt or anything to insulate. So yeah, you, you want it to just be like normal temperature. I mean, if your water comes out too cold because it's like winter time where you are, let it sit out on the counter for a while before you pour it in. No big deal. These germination domes are going to stay in there until your sprout almost reaches the top of it because at that point they're ready to just take off on their own and then you can remove the dome and set it aside in your dome storage area for further use. Uh, she has one of those. I, don't I, don't I believe do. she doesn't. She does. But there's a reason for that and we'll share that with you in a separate video. Remember, when your plant food indicator is blinking, go ahead and add some more of your pre-described amount of plant food and then hit that button because that resets it to let you know when it's the next time to add more plant food. Kind of like the change oil light in your car. <laughs> I'm serious. When you when you get your oil changed, you hit that button and then it goes in another amount of time and then it goes again. I'm making it relatable. Our light. So we're just starting off now. So we want to make sure that our light is again in the lowest position as this will direct the light right to where it needs to be. Once your plants grow roughly four to six inches towards the light, it is time to raise it to the next level. There are notches in the back of your raising bar for your light that helps keep it steady. Don't be afraid to prune, particularly when it comes to your herbs. A pruned herb plant is a happy herb plant. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. Is it not? Yes, it is very true. I, I believe in that like very, very, very strongly so much that we did a video on that, that is now lost to the, the ether. Maybe we'll have to do another one. I'm doing it in the arrow garden. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Particularly the basil because if you let basil get too leggy it's going to turn woody it's and nasty the leaves don't taste as flavorful as they would otherwise okay there we go yes it is very bright so you want to keep that in mind with your placement of your garden and once you're ready to set your light you want to start the light when you want it to come on. So when you first set up, it doesn't really matter. Just when you want it to shut off, just hit the button and then remember to wake up. So you might want to set an alarm or whatever works for you so that you can start the, the light cycle. And once you've started that start time, it's going to go ahead and shut itself off when the time frame that your plants need so just to be clear, when you turn that light on, you're starting a timer for that light. Yes, yes. And how long does it go? Is it 12 hours or 16 hours? Something like that. I'm pretty sure it was 16 hours because we've used these before. Yeah. Uh, it was far more than 12. So it's either 14 or 16 hours. But once you start that is when it will start that timer. So yeah. be aware of that when you're starting it up. Because yeah. if you started it at like 8 o'clock at night, it's going to be on all night long. Yeah. And then shut off sometime during the day. And you'd be like, why did that go off during the day? Yeah. Because yeah, you started it at the wrong time. <laughs> Other than that, it's just watch those babies grow. And speaking of that, here's a time lapse. It is day 19 and it's time to reassess. As you can tell, the Thai basil and the Genovese basil have gone to town. They are super happy. The dill is looking pretty good, but when I moved it, I noticed that we had an aphid infestation on our dill. And There's still a couple on it. That was discouraging. But aphids are really easy to deal with, particularly in this environment. So all I did was remove the pod and check out that root on that guy. And I took him over to the sink and I rinsed everything thoroughly because aphids are kind of wussy and they're easy to knock off. So Squish. 
I just got rid of them and picked a few off that were clinging on to dear life. And then I wiped everything down trying to make sure that there was no more aphids. Brian's seeing aphids now, so he's going to smoosh them. Smooshed. Which is completely okay. So the dill might look a little sad now because it's waterlogged, but as soon as it dries out, it's going to perk back up and it'll be fine. Great. The dill will be better. <laughs> Brian is showing a lack of enthusiasm because he doesn't really like dill. It's okay. It's not my favorite thing. So if you notice, I still have the cap on the mint, but it is there. It is totally there. It just hasn't filled that tall. the cap yet, so I'm letting it keep its little micro uh, environment going. The curly parsley and the thyme, however, are wah, not wah, showing wah. signs of life. So the estimation on germination for time was... 7 to 14 days. 7 to 14 days. And being that we're at day 19, we are past that germination time. But I did take a peek at this earlier, probably around the 14-day mark, and I did see that little green guy in there. So, again, I don't I don't know why he's not taking off, and, but I'm hoping that he eventually does and doesn't just kind of mold and die in there. However, the curly parsley's uh, suggested germination time is 14 to 21 days. So being that this is day 19, we're so still two days. in the time period that it can get going. Uh, when I took a peek, closer peek at that one, I did see there were, there were multiple seeds that you can see visually yeah, they put more than one in. on the top. And so I took a pair of tweezers and tried to cram one of those seeds into the material that the pods are made of, hoping that that would give it a better contact to encourage sprouting. But we saw a little bit of green in both of those, so I'm hopeful that they will get with the program and get growing. However, because everybody else has started, we have some decisions to make at this time. As you can tell, both basils have reached nearly touching the light. So this would be the time for those plants that we would raise it to the next notch, giving it room to grow and ensuring that the leaves themselves don't become burnt from being too close to the to the light or touching it directly. But, but that reduces the direct light to the smaller guys. So one of the ways we can cheat that is we can trim our larger plants down to a closer to the ground. I wouldn't, ground. I wouldn't go a lot, but there's the top crown can go. Level. Um, so that way we can keep the light at the, the lowest setting and hoping that everybody else can catch up. So can I trim them? Hmm? Can I, I trim them? Think, can I trim them? I think that's what we're going to do, and I think we're going to let Brian do it. So... Before Brian gets snipper happy, let's take a closer look at these plants so we can show you exactly where Brian is going to snip them. Okay, so this is the Thai basil, and you can see at the top we have these little clusters of where all the leaves sprout out. And so this is the first node where we have different leaves sprouting out. Down here is just the, the base of the plant, and we really don't want to go that far down. So Brian is going to clip just there, just above this first sprouting out of leaves. And he's going to do a similar thing on its neighboring uh, Genovese basil. You ready? Time to get snipped. <laughs> now this does a couple things too. First, it gives you a little bit of a harvest to work with. And these are going into tacos tonight, I'll tell you that right now. And second, see how it cleared out? So the light can now get to the other plants, but also it encourages the growth of that first node, which is already starting to split. So it'll go into two. And then once that splits, I'll trim it again so that we have four and so on and so on and so on. Like that commercial, you know, <laughs> and if you know what that is, then you're probably about my age. And if you don't know what it is, then you're probably much younger. All right, so as we mentioned with discussing the curly parsley and that there was multiple seeds, each of these pods, <sighs> It's, I, I love basil so much. It's, it's. Even the Thai basil this time smells good to me. I normally am not a huge fan of Thai basil for whatever reason. I think it's just a sharper taste, yeah. but yeah. I'm using it. <laughs> so I've been derailed by the lovely aroma of the basil. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> it's all my fault. <laughs> 
Oh, right, multiple seeds. So this this isn't one plant. There's actually one, two, three, Looks like four. Four plants in here. There might be another one trying to we come out that five in the that other basil. Got stuck underneath the label. Yeah, five in the other basil. There's at least four mint, and then looks like one dill. <laughs> and Brian's okay with that. So you can, if you want to, very carefully dice. So you can, if you want to, very carefully dissect these to remove the individual plants and plant them separately so that you'd get the full benefit of each plant. But that can be tricky because the very fine root hairs may get destroyed in the process and so you may end up damaging all of your plants. So what we've done in the past is just let everybody grow and the strongest survive and the weakest. If you back. stay vigilant with your trimming, you can keep them getting bushy and growing and producing for you. If you let it go for like too many days or weeks, it just grows up into the light and the stems start to get woody. And before you know it, it's no good anymore. And yeah. you just basically want to just plant a new plant. That is a good note to take at this moment is that the basils, that the basils in particularly, do suffer from that woody stem syndrome where the other ones don't so much. So you really want to use your basil as much as possible so that way it remains vivacious and flavorful. Once it gets woody, we've noticed that it actually detracts from the leaves flavor itself. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure why that happens, but it has something that we've noticed multiple times with multiple plants. So it's always good to Keep an eye on your basil and trim it regularly. It removes growth, it improves growth, and it improves flavor. By the way, I would like to just say something on dill, okay? There's nothing wrong with dill per se. It's just not my favorite flavor on its own. However, it is a main ingredient in ranch dressing, which happens to be one of my favorite things. So, it is important. I just don't need a lot of it. So... Since we've trimmed this, I'm going to move it back down to the lowest setting for the light, and we're going to plug it back in and see what happens next. All right, so it's been four weeks now. We're roughly at day 28, and there are some things that have happened. First of all, you can tell that our lamp height has been increased tremendously. That's because of this guy. The Genovese basil is going to town. So much so that we missed a day and some of the leaves got burnt because they went right up against the light. I actually trimmed it one more time during that too. Um, but as you can tell, it's kind of taking over everything to the point that there's some sad leaves now on the Thai basil because it's not getting enough of the sunlight because the Genovese is being a sunlight hog so we're gonna trim it back though there's some things we can do as brian said we can trim it back further and we did munch on this a little yesterday these leaves are so lovely and so full of flavor and just give off this great aroma it's it's wonderful just being right here right now smelling them keep going <laughs> um so we can trim it rather vigorously and eat that and let it continue going we can move it so we can take it and put it in this spot where the dill is because the dill is is growing a lot since last you've seen it mm -hmm. but its leaves are very delicate and it's going to continue to be that way so it's not really going to be a sunlight hog where the genovese basil has these huge monster leaves i mean look at this leaf yeah, some of them are like compared this to my hand that that's yeah. that's nuts so that's position over there in the corner might be better for it because then it can go out this way if it wants to and not crowd the light from other people another thing you may have noticed is that our curly parsley and our thyme still have yet to sprout. In fact, I checked on the curly parsley earlier and it looked like the little bit of green that was in there turned to mold. So, and that happens, it's no big deal because Aerogarden has a policy that if you have a sprout pod that fails to sprout within its designated time frame, then you can document that and request a re return 
or a replacement and they'll ship you a new one free. So we're going to test it. So if you find yourself having any difficulty with your AeroGarden seed pods not germinating, it is really easy to contact AeroGarden to get a replacement seed pod. Simply visit their website, aerogarden.com, and you're looking for the Contact Us button. Initially, I found it at the very top, but on this recording, we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom, and the left there, you see Contact Us. Click the Email Us button. So here you're going to put in your information, such as your name, email, address, all these things that are important. You'll see the asterisk, the red asterisks next to the things that are required for them to finish this process for you. But the most important part that we want to go over right now is the request type. If you click that, it's going to show a drop down box of different selections. And so the one you're going to select is my seed pods aren't sprouting slash germinating. And then from there, you're going to put in the information about your particular Aero Garden kit. Now we have the harvest, so that has six pods. Uh, so we're going to put in how many seed pods we have and so forth and so on. But this is all dependent on what particular kit you have. Once you're all done filling out the information, you're simply going to hit, I am not a robot, because you're not a robot. And if you are a robot, I am sorry if I insulted you but they don't want robots ordering seed pods. And then you're going to hit submit. They are going to give you a time frame of when you should expect your new seed pods to arrive. I found that my replacement seed pods arrived sooner than the time frame they gave me. Uh, so because everything is growing so well, we don't necessarily really need those herbs because they're just going to take up more space you can always so an option have more time would be to remove those pods but you don't want to leave an empty hole so you can buy uh these little caps that are specifically designed to just pop right in there to cover that hole what's the what that does is it helps retain moisture so that it, you avoid further evaporation from that large hole and it also doesn't allow sunlight to get down into your water reservoir which may promote uh, algae growth and algae growth is going to rob your plants of oxygen and that is bad. Now we've discovered something that's probably better than having to buy the caps masking tape <laughs> you can just put just a couple put a, of layers because yeah. it's, it's mildly trans cover it up. translucent but if you put a couple layers on top then it works just fine and it's no big uh so another thing and i don't know if i mentioned it because this basil is so big we could remove it from the system entirely and pot it mm -hmm. in either a dirt pot or its own separate little cracky style of but i like system. having it in the kitchen but Brian really likes having it here. So what we'll probably do is just trim the heck out, trim of, the heck out of it and eat it. If we could move things, I don't know if you can or not. We've tried it before. If we could move the, the Thai basil over to this slot, that might even be better. Because then now we're balancing it out and it won't, be, won't matter so much. I'm going to go ahead and show you what is going on underneath here. Really? You can pull that out of there? <laughs> You'll never get it back in. I, I'm not going to pull it all the way out. I'm going to have Brian show you an up close so you can get a, an idea. Okay. okay, so rather than pull this out and create a mess, I'm just going to pull the whole tray top off so you can see the madness that is the roots that are going on in here. And you can see this mass right here, the big gigantor mass, that would be the Genovese basil. So you can see why it's so happy. It is even more happy underneath the, the surface. Okay, so my replacement pods have come in the mail. I have cleaned out my Aero Garden kit and I'm ready to start germinating my new pods. So here are my new pods. The thyme and the curly parsley, just like I ordered. And so I am going to place these in the very front. Now, because I've already gone ahead and cleaned my air garden, I could fill all the rest of the pods if I wanted to, but I want to dedicate this just to the two pods that didn't germinate. 
I don't have any of the cap plugs that you can get for your Aero Garden, but I have found Scotch tape works almost as well. It's not quite as opaque as you would want it to be. So I found if you rip off a piece roughly the size of the diameter of your grow pod hole and you tape over it, and then you do another piece and you tape over that kind of like an X, you'll have the double layer of tape. I have found double layering the tape in this manner and creating an X pattern should make the the layer be opaque enough that it limits the amount of light that can pass through into your reservoir bowl, thus inhibiting algae growth. And that's the reason why you want to cover up these these open holes so that excess light doesn't get in there and create an algae bloom which is going to deprive your seed pods of oxygen. Of course if you have the plugs that are specifically designed for your air garden kit then it's even more simple because they pop in just as easy as the pods do. Now that I have my replacement pods in place I'm going to go ahead and start the growing process again and see what happens. Okay, so it's been a little over a week and our sproutlings of herbs are super happy. Let's take a closer look. I haven't removed the domes of any of these yet, but as you can see, the Genovese basil is popping off its dome. So let's go ahead and set him free. Look at how happy he is. That is pretty cool. You can see on the condensation on many of these domes that they did a really good job creating their own little mini greenhouse effect. So this is the mint. You can see that it looks pretty happy and healthy as well. This one here is the thyme. It is looking pretty good. It's smaller than the others, but this one took longer to germinate. So I am happy to see a healthy little plant. Over here we have the dill. It's already got its true leaves and it was trying to push its dome off. So it's doing good. Over here, well, we got a lot of growth and a lot of condensation. Oh, and it's stuck. <laughs> Give me a sec. All right, so there's the Thai basil released. It is nice and happy. And the last one is the curly parsley. I'm gonna look in there. I don't see anybody home. Let's take a peek. Yep, there's nothing in there. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more. So what I've noticed occurring on the ones that don't sprout is that if they're left vacant, if you were, for an extended period of time, then that nutrient enriched growth pod just starts growing stuff. Unfortunately, it's not the stuff you want it to grow. And it looks like it gets like a film of algae over it. And I think that may inhibit any ability that if the seeds might have going to sprout but or just taking too long might have limited their ability to sprout at all so I don't really know what to do about that to limit the algae growth I know that limiting the light to the pods it um, helps with that and that's why they have the the labels on top because that limits the light hitting the growing material but still allows enough light to get to the seeds themselves and that is something you can do at this point, now that you have sproutlings growing, you can tear or push back the label section to give it more room to grow, particularly if there's an additional seedling that's kind of pushed underneath the label, go ahead and remove that section of the label so that the sproutling can get to the light. At this point, we're just going to let them continue to grow. I'm back with our Aero Garden Harvest herbs starter kit and as you can tell our herbs are very happy now we have trimmed these and used these herbs multiple times at this point we've made mojitos we've seasoned pizzas and pasta sauces we've 
cooked a multitude of things and we can't keep up with how fast they're growing. That's how happy they are in this system. So I highly recommend the Arrow Garden system. Regardless of what size you choose, pick the size that works best for your environment and grow some fresh vegetables right in your own environment. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to these people over here as they help support this channel and keep us running. If you like this video, look up! There's another one you might like equally as well.